This is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about QuickBooks for Contractors. Your attention please. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now at 866-945-8070 for information about private trainings. We always record the live session with you so you can review it as often as you like afterwards. Hello and welcome to another special screencast brought to you by yours truly, Seth David, Nerd Enterprises Incorporated. And we're talking about your retention, please. Uh, in, in construction, it's typical and common and customary to for the customer to hold back 10% of all billings. Um, I suppose it's a way of just making sure that at the end of the job, as the contractor, you do your job and clean up and make sure that everything that should be done is done before they release the last 10% of the contract price plus any change orders. So, the question is how do we handle this in QuickBooks? What do we do? And I'm going to show you what I believe is a very simple way to both record it and track it. So let's come over here to the item list and what I've got is I've got a sample company file here. Let's see if they put retention in the standard items. They did. So we've got retention already set up in the default, I just picked a typical uh, construction company setup when I created this new company file. And I'm just going to edit the item for you to show you how they've set it up. And all it is is a service item. And it's being booked to a construction income account. I'm going to change that. I don't want it to go to income. Retention is not income. It's, it's a holdback. So retention is really receivable. It's money that I'm reducing what I'm billing the client by. Um, such that I would collect it later on once we've confirmed that everything that needs to get done is done. So we're going to call this retainage receivable. And it's already on the books, the account, as an other current asset. So if it wasn't on the books, you would simply create it. Just add new and create an other current asset called retainage receivable. And click OK. And it doesn't like the way retainage is spelled in the description. I don't care. I'm going to ignore it. And now I'm ready to book an invoice. Now, of course, I'm, for the purposes of this, I'm keeping it simple. I'm not going to go through the whole process of an estimate and a sales order and all that. Let's go right to the invoice. But obviously, you would do the same stuff on your original sales order when you're doing this. So let's create a customer first called Always Right Incorporated. I'll just set them up very quickly. And I'm just going to pick some things here at random plans and permits. 5000 I know my construction company is expensive. Uh, we got to do a demo. Destroy the place. 3000 And then we'll pour some concrete. Why not? Another 5000 Just trying to build up an invoice here so you can see what this really looks like. And then we'll do the roof frame for uh, 9000 so I've got an invoice here for 22000 then what I'm going to do is bill my retention. But on the original invoice now, remember, this is going to be a negative amount. So I want to get 10% out of this. And all I need to do is take the 22000 I put a minus 22000 times 0.1, and I've got my 2200 retention. And so the total amount due on this invoice is 19800 Now before I do this, let's look at the balance sheet, because I like you to see what this looks like. I'm running a balance sheet here for all dates. And here's my invoice. Oops, I don't need that right now anymore. So of course watch what happens when I hit save and close. You're going to see the accounts receivable for the 198 and you're going to see the 2200 show up in retainage receivable. And then we're going to do another one. It still doesn't like the way I'm spelling retainage. Refresh the balance sheet. Yes, I always want you to refresh it. So now I've got, just like I said, my receivable and my retainage receivable. Now let's do another uh, invoice for another customer because I want you to see then how to sort of set up and create the report to make this easy to track because the question comes up, well, how do I track it? How do I remember? And the way you remember is you create a standard report uh, that contains all the retainage receivable so that every time you're closing out a job, then it should become part of your practice. It should become part of your procedure 
to check the retainage receivable account and make sure that that customer has paid everything in. But I want you to see what it looks like with more than one customer in there. That's my whole point here. So let's create another customer called Never Wrong Incorporated. These guys are really negative. We'll add them quickly. Okay, and I'm just going to, for their purposes, I'm just going to save time and put one line item here, uh, 25,000. Or, t yeah, 25,000. And then we'll do their retention. If I could type, it would be useful. Minus 25,000 times 0 0.01. Tab key. So there's my $250 of retention. I did not enough. Uh, minus 25,000 times 0.1. 2500. So now, of course, when I save this, my receivables are going to go up by another 225, and my retainage receivable is going to go up by another 2500. Save, ignore, and there's my 4700. So now here's the report we want to create, and before I even do that, let's go to reports, let's go to memorize, memorize report list, and we'll create a new group. Well, I'm not going to get into all that now. Let's just create a, I'll put it in the uh, customers section. So we'll double click this retain its receivable and as you can see the problem with this is that I cannot see very clearly you know what the history is on retainage for a specific customer. It's clear enough now because there's still only two but the point is in the total buy I want to choose this and choose customer. That way I can see very clearly which ones owe which amounts. Change the header here Call it retainage receivable. So we've got that. Now let's invoice them. Let's say the job is done and we're going to invoice always right for the retainage. It's very simple at this point. I bill always right. And I'm not going to bother with all this. I put retention in here and this time it's just positive and they owe 2200 and I would know that because at this point I'm looking at this report and let's memorize this report and we'll save it in the report group called customers and we'll say okay so now and I always like to add this one up to the icon bar always add your memorize report list to the icon bar and I don't recommend using the report center. Just go right to this report list. To me, this is much uh, easier or quicker, I should say, to navigate. So that if I was doing this from scratch now, all I would do is come over here to memorize reports, come over here under customers, retainage receivable, double click. There it is, 2200 is the number. And of course, watch what happens when I hit save and close. I will now, this will now essentially transfer back in, where's my balance sheet at? Uh, it will transfer out of the, see this closes out, this is zero, and it transfers essentially out of the uh, balance sheet retainage receivable and goes into the normal accounts receivable because now I'm billing them for it all. And that, my friends, is how you handle retainage. It's the easiest, simplest way to handle retainage. Again, the, the key to this at the end of the day is just setting up the memorized report after you've linked the item to the balance sheet account or changed it. Just go to Memorize Reports and run your report, Retainage Receivable. And this should be a, a, a standard procedure every time you're closing out a job or every time you're going to invoice a client. Just get in the habit of running this report. I do stuff like this all the time. I don't have retainage in the accounting industry, but I do charge retainers for my clients and it works exactly the same way. Where, well, not exactly the same way. I have deposits on account from customers. And I use a very similar report structure and procedure in terms of running that report every time I'm doing my billing to make sure that I've accounted for any deposits received from customers and I this way I know in my case to look at the, the comparable report to this on my books and you know where it's appropriate I book the journal entry to take it out of deposits and apply it to their invoices so here it's the same concept it's just a matter of bringing it into your daily procedure to or, or, or yeah daily or however often you do your billing but it, bring it into your billing procedure to you know and I've set it up this way so it's in two clicks whenever you're doing your billing just go memorize reports Retain is receivable. Very, very simple. As always, if you have any questions, email me, Seth at NerdEnterprises.com. Visit me on the web at www.NerdEnterprises.com. Visit our knowledge store at NerdEnterprises.com forward slash knowledge. 
because if you like videos like this, then you're going to love what I've got in my knowledge store. I've got full-length classes you can download. We've got our cash flow projections. See what's new in QuickBooks 2012. Uh, I've got my accounting for real estate site. I've got lots of stuff in here. And of course, as always, if you like this video, if you found it helpful, or again, if you have questions, please feel free to post your comments and questions on the YouTube video directly or in the blog, wherever you are when you're watching this. Post your comments. I love to get them, and I can't wait to get in and post my replies to them. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I do look forward to seeing you on the web. This has been a special presentation brought to you by Nerd Enterprises Incorporated. QuickBooks for Contractors. Your attention, please. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now at 866-945-8070 for information about private trainings or consulting. We record the live session with you so you can review it as often as you like afterwards.